Today, I want to showcase and talk about the build that I've recently been playing. This was brought to me by my buddy Spider, and a lot of you guys have really recommended it. And well, I don't think there's enough introduction to the world to really showcase and demonstrate and talk about how awesome this build is. So I figure, you know, set up a 600 corruption boss, run into an echo, and really just kind of let you guys firsthand just see what the, you know, what the damage looks like. I feel like I'm supposed to like follow it up with some witty remark or something cool to try to sell it to you, but I, <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I've got, you know, if you if you missed it, if you missed it, let's just, you know, let's just run it back and do it one more time because there's just not enough words to describe what this build is doing and how it works and what's going on. And I mean, I mean, what other better way to do it than to just, you know, grab a shade and, you know, kill him too. Oh, I messed up the combo. Yeah, we're dead. So I'm actually really glad I messed this combo up so that I can actually talk to you guys and showcase to you what's going on, what happened, and how this entire build actually functions. So I'm human. The build is weird. The build is wild. The build is quirky. The build has an insane burst window. And if you mess it up, it is quite awkward. But we'll get to the burst window and talk about that in a second. Let's go over the build, what it does, how it works, and what's going on. First off, we are playing a marksman. So we have clicked the button that says marksman. We have spec actual zero points into Marksman. We are using Marksman for one reason and one reason only, detonating arrow. We are actually using detonating arrow to throw it onto a mine with a couple of cool tricks. We are dealing massive, massive, massive amounts of damage. We are able today, just today alone, I was able to push my character. You see right here, right now, 630 corruption. And it is an absolute blast. It is a farming machine and you can play this build really, really, really early as early as I think it's like level 36. The build is revolving around clicking the marks and budding using detonating arrow and taking advantage of these gel course blast knives. These things are pretty much nuts. They give you plus three to detonating arrow. They remove the cost from detonating arrow altogether. You don't need a bow anymore. And the initial projectiles change to a melee attack that applies an explosive charge that hits each enemy. So it's just hitting the whole screen and, you know, detonating arrows, not scaling with melee damage instead of bow damage. You just get flat 50 damage. And these, you know, combine two of these, it's plus six to skills, plus a hundred flat damage. And, you know, you go into an echo, no problem. The build itself is actually wild. You know, we take detonating arrow, we throw it onto a mine and you pretty much just go into these 600, you know, corruption echoes, no problem. The build itself though, you know, caveat, star, asterisk, however you want to say it, is a little weak in terms of defenses. If you get stunned with that beautiful clicking sound of the shield, you will die. You'll notice too that the mana is a little bit of an issue and we recover all of our mana with shift, but we go over that as well. And we'll talk about that. But overall, doing echoes and clearing monoliths and just kind of pushing corruption, this build is really, really, really good. I originally thought the build was going to be a little bit of a meme. I didn't really know what was going on. And when my friends showcased the video to me, you know, that really set this in motion, I was, you know, at first I was a little skeptical. I didn't think it would be able to, with, you know, the gear showcased in the video, go into a monolith and just be able to just do what it's doing right now. No problems, no issues, no nothing, you know, minus the mana. And it has performed and performed and performed. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to allude you guys to, you know, anything, but it, it has its little bit of issues and it doesn't, you know, and it, it doesn't, but it's, it's, it's strong. It's crazy. It's wild. The build was brought to me by you guys. Uh, it was brought to me by my buddy spider, plus a couple of other, you guys that watch the channel and support me also had mentioned it and the build originally comes from matt jestic multi gaming was the first place that we saw it and he puts together this great video with all of these updates and he goes over every iteration of the build and where it is where it goes where it belongs you know even at the time of recording he has like new videos coming out for it and what happened was this spider was just like watch this video so i watched this video i was like where's the pob or where's the link or where's the last epoch planner and he gives me a planner and i start looking at this gear and immediately I'm like three LP daggers, four LP helmet, four LP armor. Like this is never going to work. And I'm, I'm skeptical. I'm so skeptical. And he goes, bro, I'm playing it. Just try it. 
and I say, there's no shot this works. There's no shot this actually works. And he goes, put all the gear on, give it a run and see what happens. Hey, yo, thanks for the follow. <laughs> that makes it into the video. So I grab my old marksman. I click on all of the gear that's in that best in slot planner. And I say the heck with it. Let's see what happens. Now, my buddy Tao at the time, he's super interested. He's like, I need to see this. Let's see what happens. I respect the character. I put all of the uniques on, no LP, no nothing, just the uniques. Make sure all of my skills are prep and stacked properly. All my stat points are in and we hop into a Corruption 500 because we had access to it and it blew up everything with all the uniques up. No LP, no nothing. And I was like, holy crap, there's no way this works. There's no absolute possible way this works. It can't be this good. And uh, I was baffled and blown away. And I sat in Discord with the community for hours. So if you're not in the Discord, you should join the Discord because we do it all the time. We hang out there. And I sat in the Discord with the community. And we were we were up for hours, just like playing the build and learning the build and understanding the build. And you know, I was able to do pretty much insane things with the build right away. I had tested on stream, you know, going to fight a tier four Joel rub before I understood how the build worked and you just instantly kill it. And there's like, it's so mind blowing to play it, but enough with the introduction. Let's, let's talk about the build and what's going on. We had mentioned the daggers and the daggers are the big key point and the big takeaway from this build. As long as you have the daggers at level 36, you could start playing the build. Essentially, we click Marksman, like I had mentioned, so we can get Detonating Arrow, and we're putting Detonating Arrow on Explosive Trap. The only way this works is if I take the Arrow Trap node that says when an Explosive Arrow Trap detonates, all Explosive Traps now detonate in a quick succession and fire Detonating Arrows at the original target trap's location. Very, 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 very important. When you pair that with Trap Sprinkler and Trap Uchet and all of this stuff, it essentially takes your Explosive Trap and turns it into a exploding detonating arrow. So we just do this, and while these are exploding, as long as there's mobs detonating arrows, we'll fire off and arm on the mobs and explode and deal tons and tons and tons and tons and tons, and tons of damage. You can see that my tooltip for detonating arrows is only like 4,800. My tooltip for this is 3,800, but it's hundreds of tiny explosions going off that hit really, really, really hard. Now, the tree itself, we had mentioned explosive trap. We take minefield for more traps. We take trap sprinkler for trap drop chance so that we can just drop more and more and more traps. We turn our melee attack into a trap. We take more traps so we can throw more traps. We take it so that we have even more traps so you can just throw tons and tons and tons of traps. We get minus mana cost. We get mana efficiency and throwing speed. We then get more damage. We add in arrow traps for explosive arrows we convert our damage to lightning we then do more conversion damage then we convert our damage to cold so essentially we're taking <laughs> we're taking a fire trap that we convert to lightning then we convert to cold so that we can freeze everything it is really confusing and really big brain but it works and it works damn well we are also using detonating arrow because we have to take marksman to get detonating arrow and we just get pretty much just lightning tendrils to deal a lot of damage we hit a ton of targets this is how we're able to hit the whole screen we get attack speed and shock chance we get crit strike chance we get critical vulnerability we get damage and arming speed we get pen we just get everything like the the, <laughs> the detonating arrow tree combined. I still can't get over this interaction. I'm I've been playing it for hours and I'm talking about it and recording a video about it, and I can't get over how powerful and how strong it is. We all then you're just pairing it too with like smoke screen and smoke screen just giving you stacks and stacks and stacks of bleed. So you're throwing a trap, arming a trap, exploding a trap, dealing a hundred little shots of damage, and then you're making everything bleed. You're chilling, you're shocking, you're converting all of your damage, and it's wild. It's absolutely wild. So we, you know, we we do all that, and then we smoke screen, and we add in bleed because, you know, why not? And frailty, because why not? And silver shroud, because why not? It's it's wild. It's why I can't get over it. I'm I'm shell shocked. I know I'm supposed to be recording this video and like showcasing and talking to you guys and trying to give you the full breakdown of the build and how it works. But every time I start looking at it and every time I piece it together and I start putting all the words together, it becomes harder and harder to talk about it because it's so cool. 
and it's so in depth. And the last epoch provides these really interesting builds that do all kinds of things. So like we take a mine that we convert to for, that we take a fire mine that we convert to lightning to convert to coal to stick an arrow in it to throw an arrow with a dagger that explodes for lightning damage and shocks and then we drop a bomb that bleeds our enemies and gives us dodge chance so that we don't get killed cleanses our ailments gives us more damage and gives us clones that we could take the clones and use the clones to gain more health and more mana I think that covers everything. <laughs> We're also taking shift. So like we have one of the best movement skills in the game. Shift itself is on a 3.1 second cooldown. Shift is always up. Shift is insane. Shift is insane. We're actually using shift for a couple of reasons. Shift will heal us. Shift will give, a, give us a ton and ton and ton of mana. Shift will give make us invertible while we're shifting. Shift has CDR and mana. Shift will give us movement speed. And Shift is also going to leave behind a shadow for us that we can just like smoke bomb and do all kinds of nifty things with. And we're taking shurikens because why not? Shurikens is actually crazy. And I was having this conversation earlier. Um, I think shurikens is actually a big part of the damage. Shurikens in this build are doing a couple of things. We're triggering shurikens off of sprint. As you can see, the shurikens are going around us. And we're essentially just like using the shurikens to summon a shield around us. It becomes a huge defensive layer that lasts 45% longer and gives you 30% more armor. But the really interesting thing about the shurikens, and I'm pretty convinced of this, is I'm I'm sure this is a playing a major part of it. The shurikens are now dealing lightning damage and a percent of it is based on your physical damage converted to the lightning and you're just using this to stack shock because these things are just hitting so fast so essentially the rotation and i had mentioned this at the beginning of the video the, the rotation is you want to pretty much just like throw a decoy to not die shift onto the boss drop a smoke screen and then drop all of your traps as this just gives you tons of damage and bleed and all that fun jazz but that's the the passive tree in a nutshell also we pierce everything so you just hit everything all the time ever and you just keep hitting things but yeah that's that i mentioned we take marksman we're taking marksman only for detonating arrow we're taking marksman as well or we're picking rogue because we get access to falconer falconer is giving us a ton of health a ton of dodge we're also gaining chance to gain haste while we deal more damage and we deal more damage and we deal more damage with haste and then we're also just getting just increased throwing attack speed since we're throwing a trap it has a throwing tag we scale it by throwing attack speed and we get a ton of throwing attack speed while we're with it too we take blade dancer so that we can get glancing blows glancing blows is pretty big you also have additional health and you have a chance to get a stack of dust shroud when you're hit each stack of dust shroud gives you 50 dodge rating a five percent chance to receive a glancing blow dust shrouds are really part of the defenses and they're really interesting you also just get more throwing damage and melee damage so like blade dance are just really cool and lastly you're gaining a stack of flow and you just increase your damage when consuming flow so this skills this skills a little weird and part of the rotation this skill says gain a stack of flow whenever you're using a unique skill using a fourth skill will consume all stacks of the skill to deal greatly increased damage stacks fall off after four seconds of not using a new skill so essentially you can see when I throw my decoy, I get a stack of flow. I press my W, I get another stack of flow. I press my smoke bomb, I get another stack of flow. And then I throw my explosive traps, everything gets consumed. Here we have smoke blades for more damage and we just kind of just blow everything up. And then in our rogue tree itself, we have just attack speed and physical damage. We get dodge rating and glancing blow. So we're glancing blow caps. We have health and dex, dodge rating and poison resistance. We have to take twin blades this is really important you want to make sure that you have twin blades so you can equip two daggers damage while moving minus 20 percent so this is actually really cool so since we're a really fast build that throws and constantly moves we constantly take 20 percent less damage and we just get haste on critical strike and we always crit so we always have haste and we increase our movement speed per or we increase our damage per movement speed we have increased damage while dual will increased dodge while dual wielding and just more glancing blows unfortunately the marksman tree offers us nothing and uh i mean there's like some stuff but you, it doesn't really do anything like you don't get bow attack speed uh, you can get dodge rating but whatever you can get bow damage whatever it really doesn't offer us anything everything is just like you just click marksman for detonating arrow like it's dumb <laughs> it's actually just dumb 
our gear itself we talked about the gel course blasting knife this thing is insane we want two of these the big 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 takeaway about the, the blasting knives is you want to make sure that the total minus mana cost between the two knives is minus eight if you do not have minus eight to mana cost your detonating arrow will cost mana and when you throw the traps and the traps detonate it will use a lot of mana you see right now throwing the traps is extremely mana intensive and when all of those traps explode you see we threw one two three four five traps there each one of those will explode with a detonating arrow and it'll just eat your entire mana pool so it's really important to know that these blasting knives need to have minus mana we're gonna take a peek at the mountain for an insane amount of critical strike chance um this helmet speaks for itself it's just all attributes critical strike chance you really can't beat it it's just out of control you see it gives us a couple of points of dex stats everywhere else it's just two 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 gut we're gonna use exanguinous exanguinous um i this is the first time i played with this armor this armor is actually insane you lose 20 percent of your current health to gain 20 percent of it as ward and as you see i have zero health i do not die you do not die you gain increased attack and cast speed and movement speed if you use the potions so you know you could just you know when you lose a little bit of ward you can like use a potion it doesn't work if you're on full ward but if you had taken a hit and you would potion you could potion to get you know buffs the, the armor itself is crazy i know all my gear has lp we'll talk about the lp in a minute we're going to use this amulet so that we have no health leech no health regen um and 100 percent of our potions are converted to ward we want to keep our life low this amulet really confuses me it still confuses me. <laughs> I understand it, but it's a really confusing amulet. We just want to make sure that our health is constantly being drained so that Exanguinous can do its thing. If we don't have the amulet on and we start regaining health, we start losing ward and that becomes a problem. Anytime that you gain more health and this has to combat the health gained, you're just going to start losing ward and you really don't want to do that as ward is our big defensive layer. We also get a lot of bonuses for having low life in this build. So we want to make sure that our life is constantly drained as low as possible. And we can really scale our ward for health gain with having hits on LP like increased health. But we'll talk about that in a minute. The belt, we're going to be using Shattered Chains. We're pairing Shattered Chains with Siphon of Anguish. Since this now says that detonating arrow scales with melee damage instead of bow damage, we get pretty much the chance to apply Doom and Doom gives us more melee damage per stack of Doom. So this combination in itself is like perfect for melee damage. We use the ring to just, you know, stack Doom. The ring also gives us movement speed, all resistance, which is pretty important. And, you know, you just get Doom and you combine it with the belt, you just get a ton of armor, a ton of melee damage, and then you get more melee damage per stack of Doom. So you can't beat this combo. This combo, especially when you're converting all of your damage to melee is out of control absolutely out of control the ring we're using the ocean the ocean ring this ring gives us chill chill duration freeze rate per stack of chill chance to shock shock duration and more damage per stack of shock since our shuriken deals a lot of shock damage and pierces and hits a hundred million times plus our traps going off hitting a hundred million times between the two of those we stack our shock to the moon and we just get more one percent more more damage i don't know if that's a typo but it's one percent more more so the more stack of shock the more more damage that you do just emphasize on more more we're using the last steps of the living our current health loss per second is replaced by ward so we have a ton of loss of health to gain more ward we get freeze rate multiplier while we're on low life we're chilled every three seconds which is literally irrelevant and we get tons and tons and tons of movement speed and ward decay threshold these boots are crazy they speak for themselves um this spear i thought was terrible for the longest time and then i realized that it's increased cold and lightning damage and we're stacking cold and lightning damage it gives us a bunch of mana it gives us a bunch of cold and lightning resistance which is really 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 important and then you get a chance to cast water orb and uh water orb does things um three water orbs per cast of your attunements equal to your int so you want to make sure that your attunements equal to your int and then you get 30 percent increased cold and lightning damage for each water orb you cast in the last 12 seconds so you have a hundred percent chance to cast a water orb three water orbs per cast if your attunement is equal to your int 
and then you have 30 percent increased damage for each water orb in the last 12 seconds so you go into a boss fight your int and attunements equal you hit the boss you cast three water orbs you have 90 percent increased damage that's nuts that is crazy that is absolutely crazy and lastly our gloves these things are the hardest thing in the world to find um but they're insane you have a chance to apply frostbite and hit you will always apply frostbite you will cap out on frostbite you'll well you'll just cast a bajillion frostbite you get a bajillion freeze rate multiplier and you will freeze everything the combination of these gloves this ring these boots on a cold skill that hits 100 million times for 100 billion damage you just pretty much freeze everything and nothing's really a problem the biggest problem is is the delay between damage of the trap going off firing the detonating arrow hitting the monster these gloves also give you water retention per 1% of uncapped cold resistance. So as you've seen a running theme with all of the gear, you want cold resistance. Cold resistance is really important. You see I have 303% uncapped cold resistance. So my ward is 3,622. If I were to take these gloves off, I immediately lose all of my ward and there is just no hope ever to maintain my ward. But if I put these gloves back on because my cold resistance is so high, I am able to pretty much get all my cold resistance there's been a lot of confusion over the wording of uncapped cold resistance pretty much uncapped means the entire total number in bracket so 303 percent so I have 303 percent ward retention but that's the gear the gear in itself is really good as far as idols go you want a bunch of these increase health all elemental resistance you want all elemental resistance or cold resistance because the plan is to stack as much cold damage as possible unfortunately I have very bad fizz necrotic and void resistance you will fix all of those with LP slams if you choose to fix them this is bad this should be changed um this this should be this I just haven't found another one of these yet to put here same with this this should be this so the little one should be cold resistance mana health and mana uh ward and mana ward in this ward in that um and all of these should be health and cold resistance or health and all resistance as far as blessings go I have all resist here. Uh, I like all resist a lot. I think it's really good. I have crit multi here. Crit multi is really good. I think this is the one that you either get all resist or crit avoidance. And I'm pretty sure I want to change this eventually to crit avoidance until I have LP gear with crit avoidance. But all resistance is really good as it gives you all resistance. And all resistance is insane. And uh, pretty much it just helps with your ward retention. I have fire resist here so they can cap out on my fire resistance this is probably supposed to be armor like flat armor i think armor might be better but i wanted to cap my fire resistance my cold resistance this one's a no-brainer you 100 want to go get the cold resistance roll as high as possible uh i have class specific sarge just here because i just wanted class shards i have shred lightning here this is really important since we deal a ton a ton a ton of lightning damage you really want to have lightning damage this for dra dagger drop rate I took this because I would like to farm another dagger and get a three LP dagger I have increased unique drop rate because I'm farming the daggers and the uniques uh this I have to change to anything but this I am pretty sure I'm going to change this to increase body armor drop rate I just need to go farm it or inc increase glove drop rate I don't know if these affect bosses I assume these affect bosses assuming these don't affect bosses I want body armor for an exanguinous but I don't know yet we'll see and then I gotta go get the last one I don't even know what goes on the last one that's just kind of like where I'm at this build is insane I haven't even had to think about the absolute last one yet um yeah I have no idea looking at last epoch tools it, it's just a shard so you can just go get whatever you want for shards it doesn't it doesn't really matter you just go get whatever you want it honestly doesn't matter but outside of that in terms of the gear there's been a lot of changes and updates to this build um you know Matt Jessic has released a whole bunch of different plans pretty much when I built it my idea was to take the best in slot gear put it on with no LP and see what happens as you see I am in COF I am wearing COF gear all of my gear says cannot be traded or has a COF tag I farmed all of this gear on stream I guess this yeah this says can't be traded this is COF can't be traded can't be traded and I I, I farmed all, I've self farmed all of my own gear on stream I farmed all of the LP gear on stream I did all the slams on stream and it's taken me about a day and a half I I did a I did a very long stream today uh slamming the gear and having a good time COF 10 makes finding the gear very 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 easy 
as far as the year goes the blood frost and death timeline gives you the gloves the boots the belt the ring and the armor you can't beat that one timeline one timeline gives you the the armor the belt the ring the boots and the gloves the gloves and the boots drop off the boss the belt and the ring drop off the shade which is how you increase your corruption you can farm those in any timeline the blood frost and death timeline gives you i'll actually show you i'll go here the blood frost and death timeline gives you unique body armors and when you click on this a lot of these nodes will eventually say unique body armor and that's how you'll farm the body armor it's the one of the easiest ways to do it you combine those nodes plus prophecies and you'll see tons and tons of tons of armors my plan as you see i'm saving up a bunch of favorites you go get a bunch of body armors to try to double up on body armors Peak of the Mountain comes from Lightless Harbor. You can actually do Lightless Harbor Tier 1 to get Peak of the Mountain. But the higher up that you do it, the better the odds are for getting LP. I know me personally, I want to go get a new Peak of the Mountain, try to get an LP2 or an LP3, and just start slamming that. As far as the LP slams go and what you should be aiming for in terms of things, I pretty much pulled up the planner from Matt's video, which I'll include in the description down below. And I just kind of like took a look at what his gear had. And just kind of pick the best things out of this that were realistic i don't ever think i'll ever see an lp4 pair of this or an lp4 i don't think i'll see an lp of four of any of the gear that i'm wearing i'll be real i think threes on the dagger is realistic i think three on this is realistic i actually have a three on this i don't think you'll see three boots or gloves You'll probably see three of this, two or three of this. You'll probably see three of this and three of this, but everything else, Exanguinous, I'm assuming we'll see a two. This is talking about in COF. Uh, in Merchant's Guild, all of this gear exists in LP3. It's an uh, arm and a leg, but you could buy it. But I haven't really looked at Merchant's gear or Merchant's Guild. But yeah, as far as things go, like my one weapon, I went Crit Multi and Armor Shred. I would ideally want Crit Multi Lightning, but you want Armor Shred on one of them. So I got armor shred here. This one, I had lightning crit multi. I missed the lightning. I hit chance to bleed. I went lightning crit multi again. You can either do percent lightning or lightning damage on melee. Both are really good. My armor, I went for critical strike avoidance. I had a tier seven critical strike avoidance. I missed and hit increased damage while wielding a dagger. I wasn't too upset. I'm going to use this until I get an LP2 exanguinous. And I'm going to once again go for increased damage while wielding a dagger plus critical strike avoidance. My helmet, Peak of the Mountain, I hit health on that. I was going for cold resistance, health, vitality, and I had increased critical strike chance per equipped dagger. I don't think you need the critical strike chance per increased dagger. I think we crit enough or we crit all the time. I haven't really tested it. I have an okay Peak of the Mountain. I think if you have a better percent Peak of the Mountain, you really don't need it. If you have a worse roll one, you might want the crit per dagger, but it never seemed relevant. I missed, so it didn't matter. And my amulet, I got crit strike, multi, and lightning pen. Ideally, on all of your gear, if you have LP3, you probably want crit multi lightning wherever you can get crit multi lightning. If you don't have crit multi lightning, you probably want increased damage with daggers and health or damage with lightning and health. But there are a couple other mods that are really good on the belt you can get mana when you use the potion which is an experimental mod i'll include a link down below to the experimental tracker so you can try to get that i think the mana po mana gain on potion and mana region is probably really good if you're really bad at managing your mana but the big takeaway is if you can do it you should probably put damage plus cold resistance on whatever you can so you can't do damage plus cold resistance on everything like my gloves i missed i had i wanted cold resistance but i missed but I have cold resistance and movement speed here. I have cold resistance here. I had physical throwing and cold resistance. I missed the, the cold resistance. I had lightning damage, throwing cold resistance when I hit my ring. Critical strike, multi chance to shred. Lightning damage, cold resist. I missed. This had damage while daggers, cold resist, and the critical strike avoidance. I probably after i record this and go back at farming in i'm gonna go get the critical strike avoidance and put it somewhere because right now in 600 corruption that's probably pretty much the biggest thing that's you know giving me a hard time but otherwise the build is awesome the build is great it moves really 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 fast you see we're at 71 movement speed base right now if i do things i'm at 118 percent movement speed 
and it plays and feels really damn good. I like it a lot. I think it's great. I, you know, constantly talking about the build in Discord and upgrades and changes. I'm going to be streaming the build for the next couple of days. So if you want to come stop by the Twitch stream and check it out there, or if you want to come by the Discord and ask a million questions, you are more than likely to come by and ask a million questions. I'm going to keep tabs on the build. And if there's updates or changes, I'm going to attempt to follow and make updates and changes and see how it goes. My whole point today was to tell you guys pretty much that you can start playing this at level 36 and you can just put the uniques on and you don't need LP and you could start crushing. So if you have the uniques and you have a marks Man, put the gear on give it a go and kind of see what happens but for now friends i'm gonna get this video out to you guys i'll see you all in the next one